Muy buenos días. Good morning. Can you hear me? Good morning. I'm Dr. Mara Gomez, and I have the pleasure to be your host today and to give you the most warm welcome to the inauguration ceremony of the 9th Ibero-American Conference on Electoral Just Justice, New Trends to Ensure Equity in the Elections in Ibero-America. Thank you very much for your attendance to this important event. Now I am going to introduce introduced to the members of the presidium. Les presento en primer lugar al magistrado Felipe de la Mata Pisaña, magistrate Felipe de la Mata Pisaña, who is the magistrate of the High Chamber of the Electoral Tribunal of the Federal Judiciary. Magistrate José Luis Vargas Valdez, magistrate of the High Chamber of the Electoral Tribunal of the Federal Judiciary. Daniel Sobato, Regional Director for Latin America and the Caribbean of International Idea. And Magistrate Janine Otalora Malasis, Chief Magistrate of the Electoral Tribunal of the Federal Judiciary. I am going to give the floor now to Mr. Daniel Sobato, Regional Director for Latin America and the Caribbean for, of International Idea, to uh, give you uh, the inauguration or opening speech. I think that I have broken the microphone already. So we are starting good. Disruptive, that's the trend. Good morning, Madam Chair, Magistrates, all. It's a great pleasure for me to be with you today, you all the dear colleagues and peers of the electoral tribunals that are here with us today. Frank and Lourdes, a greeting. Frank is coming from Stockholm, and Lourdes coming from Paraguay. So I am very honored to be here with you today. I would like to start uh, my speech by giving you a poem of Machado who says that uh, you pave your way when you walk. This uh, great Spaniard poet has the best words to describe the pathway that we have traveled together. Inspired by those that are here today, this morning we have been privileged enough to have celebrated since 2009 9th Ibero-American conferences. So we are energetic, very enthusiastic for this ninth conference in San Miguel de Allende. Before continuing with my opening ceremony words, I would like to express on behalf of Mr. Yves Leterme, the chair of International IDEA, and on my own behalf, the appreciation for this electoral tribunal of the federal judiciary to the chief magistrates, the, uh, of the, the magistrates of the high chambers and Mrs. Janino Talura for this commitment that you have done for this conference. Also, uh, a special recognition for Mr. Vargas and Mr. Vagara for being a strategic allies and for their permanent and valuable support, not only to organize this nine conference, but also for all the activities in international idea. Thank you very much, dearest chief and dear magistrates of uh, your high chamber for your excellent capabilities and capacities and being our hosts, because we feel at home in this great city of San Miguel de Allende. From the first conference in Santo Domingo 2009, uh, we said that we are going to make of these encounters a dialogue space and a reflection forum in order to emphasize electoral justice, in order to strengthen equality, democracy, and uh, elections based on in integrity of the Ibero-American community. 
from that first moment and with uh, this uh, direction we have uh, met in 2010 in Panama, 2012 in Ecuador, 2012 in El Salvador, 2013 once again in Republica Dominicana, 2014 in Mexico, 2015 in Peru, 2016 Brazil, and this year, 2017, in San Miguel Allende. So looking backwards and uh, making a balance, we have uh, very good reasons to feel proud of all the things that we have achieved uh, through this uh, small period of time. In these years, we have set the foundations and we have obtained the special mechanisms to held the main agreements in these conferences. Accumulated experience of the joint work all along this decade has allowed us to outline together with all your institutions, the guidelines of the strategic plan, which should uh, focus on the work for the next years. This strategic proposal uh, is going to be discussed with all of you so that we can validate it and start it over immediately. So we are going to focus on three main points. First of all, the training of the technical frameworks in electoral uh, law as well as electoral contentious law. The second one, the systemation, systematization of this culture, the Ibero-American culture, and the third one, the uh, strengthening of ethics and transparency in the area of electoral justice. Dear friends, in order to start these new joint uh, works, we are here together. The maturity of the democratic process in our Latin America with the shades and the the peaks and valleys, their achievements and deficits. Today, we are celebrating 39 years from the first democratic work in the region and the democratization of the elections. More than 300 electoral processes have been held during this period, and we have had a change in this debate area. Besides, as of this month of November and up to the end of 2019, I mean in a brief period of 26 months, 14 out of the 18 countries of the region will held presidential elections. This super electoral cycle sets out great opportunities, but also important challenges for the Ibero-American electoral justice. We were mentioning that this process has created a change in the regional debate. The current debate, different from the past, is not about a counterposition of the real and formal democracy, but it emphasizes the quality of democracy and integrity of elections. These dimensions cannot be erased in detail, and we cannot mention them in detail, but we will address them in detail in the next two days. As you can appreciate, the, dynami the dynamics of democracy sets out that it is in an ongoing change. So it demands us to be alert before the transformation and changes that the democracy and elections are experiencing and the new challenges and threats that both concepts are facing. To mention Mr. Guillermo O'Donnell, reality compels us to be updated on an ongoing basis in order to be able to analyze, detect reality, and identify new phenomena and new trends in the region regarding the quality of democracy as well as the integrity of our electoral processes. Now, according to these topics, we have been doing our contribution. On the one side, we have published the, the report of quality and democracy in Latin America that was done by Mr. Leonardo Molina, a, a politologist from, the, from Italy. So from IDEA, we elaborated together with the Coffee Annan Foundation, the Manual of Ideas of Electoral Justice, and you already have this available outside of the room. So along all these areas today, it is very relevant, the electoral justice in this dual dimension. We have to guarantee and we have to be institutional. Which has been the evolution of this electoral culture in the last years? Well. An electoral analysis, comparing and knowing that we have uh, been gaining more relevance. 
Our days in most of the Latin American countries, electoral justice is in charge of guaranteeing, at a minimum, amongst others, first of all, to abide by the Constitution and the law when we held elections, second, respect to the political and electoral rights of uh, the politicians and the citizens, and third, the strengthening of the political parties, Fourth, control of regulations about political financing. Fifth, uh, the enforcement of the laws of uh, gender parity. Sixth, the regular control of the administrative uh, law. And set the, to abide by all the electoral acts by the Constitution. This role, which is a, a core role in democratic quality, places the same in front of uh, a dual challenge, the first one, an internal one, and the second one, an external one. The electoral tribunals know, need to know how to defend their independence and to strengthen the electoral function, in some cases, within the same judiciary. The best way to reach this goal is through the elaboration of a high uh, rulings that have to count with the motivation and coherence. On the other hand, the increase of the electoral judge in relation to the capacity that they have of control of the political uh, power has to be responsible and professional as well as transparent and to held a high commitment for ethics. Regarding the threats coming from the external scope, this electoral adjuster has to face these challenges, which are part of three important causes. Number one, the huge political transcendence of the electoral judiciary, which is part of the, uh, this core uh, problem. The second one, an electoral justice is one of the central conditions in order to guarantee the electoral integrity, and third, because the guarantee of the elections implies to uh, watch out the judicial laws of the democratic game. Electoral justice is an indispensable element to consolidate the democratic process because it avoids conflicts in, in the, in the, when, when the elections are done, as well as to avoid risks for citizens. As a consequence of this guarantee character in the electoral laws, Electoral justice provides confidence and trust in the democratic system. First of all, the reliability of this tribunal is done through the good decisions of, uh, democratically wise. This circumstance has to do with the adequate and enough argumentation and motivation of such decisions that besides of being a rationality factor could be constituted also as an important element to change the juridical and political culture. Besides, regarding trust in the system, we have to take into consideration the increase of the powers of the electoral judge. These should be in parallel to the stringency of a greater responsibility, transparency, and professionalism. That's why, in my opinion, one of the huge challenges is that the electoral justice has to be in the midpoint, in the adequate area between the politics and the elections, avoiding the politicization of this electoral justice. This uh, public trust is the basis, the foundation to accept the results and these credible results, because this is crucial to dilute violence or riots or social conflicts and to improve uh, democratic governance. Dear friends, the governments of the countries of the Americas in, who met in Lima, Peru, unanimously accepted the International Democratic Chart, which in Article 1 sets forth, and I quote, that the, the American people 
have the right to the democracy and their governments the obligation of promoting it and defending it. End of quote. The same chart sets in the third article the essential elements of the representative democracy setting forth the plural regime of the parties, the independence and separation of the public powers, respect to human rights, the celebration of uh, uh, free elections based in the universal vote, and as an expression of the sovereignty of the peoples and access to power and the exercise to this. And in this, we cannot be confounded by ourselves. In order to be really legitimate, it's not enough when the origin legitimacy, but it's also necessary to, necessary to have an exercise legi legitimacy. So both have to be submitted to the uh, rule of law. It's precisely this right to the representative democracy in the terms that are set out in this chart the one that has to outline this electoral justice. In order to make it more direct, there is no quality democra democracy without the without uh, having all these elections and without the electoral independent justice that guarantees and makes effective this. This is, dear friends, the virtuous circle that we should strengthen urgently specifically in the current times where democracy in our region is defending itself from all the external media as a consequence of the different challenges facing them. This combined with high poverty levels, 30% as an average regional, the uh, worst uh, inequality at an international level, corruption in mainly impunity and also the representation crisis are an explosive mixture which represents a high degree of heterogeneity but it also impacts in a diverse manner to our countries. From the last surveys that we have had amongst them the project of the public opinion of Latin American and Latino Barometro both from 2017 there arise very uh, concerning data. On the one side, a drop in the support to democracy, which uh, is dropping in the fifth consecutive year, and it's in the 53%, as well as the satisfaction levels, which decreases in the fourth, for fourth consecutive year, and it's at uh, a very low 30%. On the other side, the low legitimacy uh, levels of the representative democracy, specifically of the Congresses and the political parties who continue to occupy the last uh, place with only the 15% of the citizens support this phenomenon is provoking the eruption of independent candidacies in uh, a high number. This combined with the drop in the credibility of the electoral processes, all this creates a cynicism and uh, Monster for these uh, citizens, and I'm not referring only in the uh, political spheres, but also in the economic spheres and the union spheres, and it places po uh, politics under suspicion. In, the, in this situation, the corruption risks increase in our region, but also in the United States, Europe, and other regions of the world, of independent candidates before systems with a populist and anti-policy uh, speech that are not good for us. With this moment, the possibility is that the citizenship is trying to have a savior as a president and from the democratic processes. Another evidence that we can uh, take out from these surveys is the increase to the support of the executive executive coups in Latin America in order to answer effectively to the corruption and insecurity problems. Dear friends, it is precisely under this scope that the electoral justice that we have already mentioned should have an important, a critical contribution by injecting confidence and trust to the whole project and the electoral processes specifically. That's why 
your role and the, your, the role of your institutions is paramount and strategic more than ever. I invite you to continue working jointly so that we continue paving the way together as we have done in these last nine years to continue progressing with our commitment, professionalism, and enthusiasm in order to strengthen equality, democracy, and to have elections that, ha that are independent, transparent, guaranteed, and effective. I wish you the best of success in this journey. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Daniel Sobato, and your very important words. Now we are going to listen to Mrs. Janine Otalora Malasés, who is the Chief Magistrate of the Electoral Tribunal of the Federal Judiciary. Good morning. Thank you very much. Distinguished members of the Presidium, Magistrate Felipe de la Mata, Magistrate Jose Luis Vargas, Dr. Daniel Sobato, to all of you on behalf of the Electoral Tribunal of the Federal Judiciary, we wish you uh, a, a very warm welcome uh, to this, our country, Mexico, and San Miguel de Allende specifically. It is an honor for us that Mexico is once again the venue for the ninth uh, Ibero-American Conference on Electoral Justice in our region. Centuries ago, we uh, would like to uh, reach the greatest ideals of the human being, like freedom, equality, and justice. Ibero-American efforts uh, for democracy in the last quarter of last century allowed our countries to really uh, aspire for these universal principles. Besides democracy and insist institutions contributed to pacify the um, fight for this uh, political power. Nevertheless, this democratic uh, uh, booster or um, have been diluted before some uh, historical structural problems like inequality, poverty, and economic crisis. When I explain this democratic dissolution, mainly for Mexico, Jose Wondelberg has mentioned that the democracy that is existing has not complied with the expectations. And this could create the temptation of saying that this is a system that is not working even though this is the one that we best know. Latino Barometro Report 2017 unfortunately confirms this democratic drop. For the fifth consecutive year, the support to democracy in Latin America is not improving and it's recording a drop of one percent in comparison to 2017, going back down to 53 percent in 2017. And in the case of Mexico, this phenomenon is more dramatic because the support to democracy has decreased 10 percent in only one year to uh, be in 58%. Undoubtedly, there are some complex challenges in order to revert this uh, dissolution for democracy. One of those is to separate in a very clear manner what are the powers of a democratic system, which is to determine the rules, to elect the governors, the governments, and to oversight that these rules are complied, and the, the action that the elect governments have to perform or to carry out. Nevertheless, those who are part of the bodies of electoral justice have a great work to do in order to recover the trust of the citizens in our democracy. It seems to me that electoral judges, for example, have at least four responsibilities along this task. The first one of them is is that even though the electoral judici uh, judiciary um, 
authorities are at the middle of this political power. Uh, uh, we cannot be at the middle but above this. And the way to guide ourselves is to abide by the Constitution and the law. That's why we need to keep our autonomy, independence, and acting above the political disputes in our societies or controversies. The second responsibility is crucial that electoral judges keep clarity and the consistency in the juridical criteria from uh, since where we saw the referendums of all the elect the elections without these essential components it's not possible to strengthen the public perception or that the electoral tribunals are operating above uh, the partisan fights. The third responsibility is that we need to oversee electoral integrity, which is a very useful tool not only to assess the quality of democracies, but also to strengthen them. By following Mr. Dieter Nolan, electoral integrity assumes to analyze all the phases of the electoral cycle from the beginning of the electoral process to the votation in the electoral journey, counting the, the results and all the consequent change. Besides, electoral integrity implies to take into consideration of this scheme as an ethic uh, uh, postulate. Those that have to behave honestly according to the values and the standards that are the foundation of all democratic elections. In this way, a challenge for electoral integrity and a hindrance for the quality of democracies are wrong electoral practices of the voters and or their, sorry, of uh, the, the candidates and their followers. So this implies to have an intention against uh, uh, electoral integrity. This attitude creates among the society loss of trust in the democracy and its institutions, and it erodes legitimacy of the electoral process and its results. Hence, the responsibility of the law of the law enforcers have to be overseeing all the bad electoral practices and all that is breaching the laws in this regard. And finally, the fourth responsibility is our obligation to oversee the compliance of the Constitution for the political and electoral rights, as well as regarding the electoral standards. We need to oversee that no one is above the law or to breach their content. And even though the tribunals are in charge of the constitutionality of acts and laws, we need to promote and invite our different societies to defend their constitutions because this is their heritage and the guarantee of their freedoms and rights. We have to create awareness among the citizens that an elemental way to recover confidence in democracy is by defending their freedom and their constitutional rights. When we defend something, we appreciate it more. As Mr. Manuel Garcia Pelayo quoted, it's not the constitutional tribunal, the only body who is in charge of defending the constitution because this is a task for everyone, so we need to defend it all. I am pretty sure that the topics that we are going to address in this ninth Ibero-American Conference will help us to better understand the challenges that we are facing and that are going to be translated in useful tools that will contribute to recover the confidence of citizenship in democracy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chair Magistrate, for your uh, very deep words. We would like to thank the participation from all the members of the Presidium and the uh, attendance of each and every one of you in this ceremony. With this, we uh, wrap up this uh, inauguration ceremony. 
But first we would like to invite you all to uh, please go to the central patio of the convention center so we can take the official picture of the event. We would like to remind you that immediately, immediately after the picture we will start with the um, keynote panel which will uh, address the new trends to uh, ensure equity in the elections in Iberoamerica. Thank you very much.